welcome to a member community of the Centers for Spiritual Living. And now, if this is your first time and you're wondering, oh, that minister is so sensitive. Why, why is she already in tears? Uh, we, I just got back from an integration conference for 58 years. We had the United Centers for Spiritual Living, and we had the International Centers for Spiritual Living, and they were teaching the same principles that we just sang, and yet they were different. And in the week since I have seen you, we have, with great preparation, many years of preparation, voted to dissolve the International Centers and the United Centers. And we are now a movement that is twice as big, and our name is the Centers for Spiritual Living. And so if you would join with me in blessing this baby infant organization, that just as a human infant comes into the world as a fully formed soul, a wise, intelligent being, knowing their oneness with God and having a spiritual path, so it is that within this universe that is all God and God's expressions, and each one of us, including myself, is one of those expressions. A new expression, fully formed, is now the Centers for Spiritual Living, of which we are a part. This organization, with all of the wisdom of the ancients, is now on the world stage as an example of what would heal the world. And that is the energy of coming together and noticing our similarities that will heal any appearance of being separate and different. And so it is that we are a part of an amazing movement of noticing that we are the same as our brothers and sisters. And as we are exactly the same, in the Centers for Spiritual Living, we are so similar to the Catholics and the Jews and the Baptists and the Lutherans and the Muslims and the Hindus and the pagans, bless their little hearts. We are so similar, knowing that each one of us is enlivened by that one source, whether we call it God, Allah, Great Spirit, Great Mother, or any other name, that universal energy lives in each one of us, operates through us, expresses as us. And as we look out from our own eyes with that awareness of the infinite presence, we meet that in others so that we can truly say, the namaste message that when I am in my God place and you are in your God place, we are one. And so it is. Okay, that was really wonderful for me. So <laughs> would you please welcome a, a family member, Stephen Meese, and Sechko and Mies are our wonderful musical gift this morning, uh, already having delivered, you darlings. So um, please welcome Sechko and Mies. Good morning. I can feel it in you.
This is the time where we bless our children as they go off to teach their teachers, and it looks like there's one. <laughs> Bye, sweet one. Go have fun with your teachers. <laughs> uh-huh. Here's a couple up here. So this is also the time in the service. And by the way, I'm Posy Lyon, and I'm the practitioner of the morning. I forgot I got caught up in the, the beauty of the young who teach us so much about who we are. So this is also the time in the service where we give gratitude, and today we are thanking Cindy Lou Janison for her generous support of our coffee hour. And you too can become a sponsor. If you look on the front of your bulletin, there's information on how to do that. And also, today, 
We are so blessed to have our own Annie Rohrbach back with us to have a book signing and uh, her book launch. Her books are right behind here, piled up and make sure you get one. And she's also blessing us with a workshop after service. It's only $15. It's at the Learning Center. So there's also information in your bulletin about that. Today is also our service fair. So if you have taken a break for service or you've never served in this community, this is your opportunity to sign up. And one of the things about volunteering in this service, in, in this center, is first you get to act in sacred service and, and get to receive all the good of doing that. But it's also a way to make friends and to become really fully integrated and begin to know people in this community in a much deeper sense. So take advantage. There are tables all around the room. Look and see what might attract you in terms of giving service today. And also back by popular demand, it's our Prosperity Plus class. So if you have not experienced this, I really urge you to do it. A number of practitioners have signed up for this session. I took, I think, the first one. And um, it's a fabulous class if you want to experience prosperity in any area of your life, and, and not just in money, just in life, to, to live a fuller, richer life of your dreams. It's our own Reverend Carol who's teaching it. It starts February 23rd. This Thursday. This Thursday. The sign-ups are on the education table. The cost is $57 for the materials and the um, commitment to experiment with tithing for the 10 weeks. And it promises to be another really powerful class. So take advantage. And our own Marilyn is back in town and about to teach a class. Thank you, Posey. <clears throat> um, I have the joy of facilitating a class called Change. And this is a six-week class. Um, doesn't matter whether you've taken other Science of Mind classes before or not. Um, and, you know, Change is uh, one of the things practically, well, we can depend on in life. We know that everything will change and keep changing. And Change can be either intimidating or it can be exhilarating and empowering and expansive. Change is always our opportunity. And this, um, there's very little reading. Most of the work we will do will be in here. As we know, that's where things happen because when we change our thinking, our lives change. And changing our thinking is something that is wonderful to do with a group of people who are doing the same kind of work as you are because you gain momentum, you inspire each other, you get support. You, if you run up against snags, then you can talk about them and make, take advantage of them. So if you are looking to welcome change with an open and empowered heart because you are connected with the changeless source of all that is, and you would like to change your thinking, come and talk to me. I'll be right over there. The class will begin on March 5th, and you can get the rest of the details later. Thank you. Don't you love being part of such a vibrant community with so much happening? I love it. And we are now live streaming, in case that's new to you, and there's information about it on the back of the bulletin. So let your friends know who might not be able to come to services that they can watch us online. How cool is that? And back to Reverend Carol. Uh, well, I have an announcement before I start the talk. And uh, how many of you know that it is Mardi Gras time? <laughs> so... Okay, so you're supposed to wave your arms wildly and say, you're, okay, yay! <laughs> oh, I just, I feel like I'm on a float. Woo! <laughs> so, um, <laughs> my, you know, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to do anything X-rated or R-rated. <laughs> I involved, and I didn't. 
you know, they, you know, it's not required anymore that you show anything to get those beads. Uh, so anyway, I have a, um, a Mardi Gras table over there, and I brought back beads, and so did Katrina. And so you can uh, take some beads uh, if you would like uh, and be a part of this wonderful celebration. Uh, the integration meeting was in New Orleans, and I thought Mardi Gras was that Tuesday, which is this Tuesday coming up right before Lent, you know. But no, no, Mardi Gras stretches for two weeks uh, uh, before Fat Tuesday. And um, in fact, we couldn't get to our hotel. We had, the van could not get there because of a parade. So we had to walk and, and pick up beads and, you know, ah! so it was, <laughs> and I also brought you a king cake and somebody, who else, who brought the other king cake? Judith brought the other king cake. Now, here's the deal with the king cake. It's a circular cake with the colors of Mardi Gras, purple, green, and gold, in powdered sugar or granulated sugar. And there is a baby in the cake, a, li a little pink baby. And this is baby Jesus. And, and it's a king cake because of the wise men, the kings, who were hunting for the baby. And so as you eat the cake, you are hunting for the baby too. And anybody who gets the baby has great luck for all year. Of course, we don't believe in that. Everybody can, can have uh, great luck for all year. But anyway, to um, just be with the season, we've got two king cakes. And so make sure that you uh, avail yourselves of that. And um, to let you know more about what happened at the integration conference. The delegates who were Bob Gordon, Sue Ruta, uh, Katrina Paulson, and my daughter Melanie, who won't be here, but the rest of us will be here next Sunday, and for about 15 or 20 minutes after the service, we will keep the microphone live, and we will tell you what the integration means and um, give you some specific information about uh, what, what we did on your behalf in New Orleans. So that's going to be next week, okay? So um, for those of you who are here for the first time, I want to welcome you warmly. I'm the senior minister, but I get lots and lots of help from everybody uh, that's on any team here. And you're more than welcome, and uh, we love you and hope you feel like you have come home. So, moving into the talk part, um, our theme for 2012 is called Tools for Transformation. And uh, that tree there is all about the tools. We are going to need to make more paper copies of this because the whole idea is for each one of you to have one. We have one left over there on the newcomer's table, so if you get there first, you can snag that one, and we'll make more for you for next week. But the idea is that there is a word for each week that you consider how in your life you are going to make some changes based on that word. And there is a place for you to write an affirmation and then commit to an action step. Because what, what we know is that if we do not follow a new thought with a new action, what we're doing is we're thinking about it rather than really thinking through it. So, for example, last week, Reverend Lloyd talked about courage. And that is the seventh Sunday of the year. Courage is right up there at the top of the tree, leaf number seven. And if everybody wrote an affirmation and an action step based on courage, there would be a shift in your life. And that is what transformation is about. Thinking about courage is, well, wouldn't it be nice if I had a little more of it? But thinking it means that you embody it and live through it. So action is inevitable when you have embodied these tools for transformation, okay? So the, uh, the monthly theme, and by the way, um, uh, we're also using this book by Angelus Arian, uh, and this is what Angelus Arian says about practice. Practice is meant to be active, rigorous, and dynamic. 
We're doing book studies on this. There are two books, book study groups that are still open. They're on the education table. If you want to form your own couples group or, you know, I mean like two people, three people, smaller groups, I'm going to write an, a study guide every month for, for your monthly meeting. I'll do that first thing when I come in on Tuesday so you'll have it. And the books are in the bookstore, so we should be good to go with the book studies. So the theme, which follows the book for February, is Attend to the Heart. And the words that we have had so far are love, courage, and today, in um, you can figure out what it is with my talk title, which is Clear Heart, Safe Heart. The word is clarity. So this new organization, CSL, Centers for Spiritual Living, is a new organization that was reformed around clarity. Replacing confusion, that's the lovely thing about clarity, it replaces confusion. So when we were two organizations, that was very confusing for people. They said, why are there two organizations? And there was no answer. So as we lived through the, the spiritual tool of clarity, and part of clarity is knowing our oneness, it became clear that what we had to do was create one organization out of two. That's what we did. And so now, how to bring it together in practice, active, rigorous, and dynamic, is what is the, the place we're in now. And so just stay tuned because um, I think it's going to get very exciting. I mean, we're one. It's like we're married. And if the problems come up, it's not if we're going to solve them, it's how. And so it's, uh, oh, it's going to be so growth producing and fabulous. So um, we have this teaching that is based on clarity. And um, Annie's going to talk for about 10 minutes up here right now as part of uh, the talk time in the service. Um, Annie's book, this is her book, Conscious Order. Um, you know, order, according to Thomas Troward, is heaven's first law. Order replaces confusion as well. And uh, did, are you going to talk about mom, or can I talk about mom? Okay. My mom was Annie's teacher in practitioner studies. She was many of the, of the practitioner's teacher. And the year that Annie went through practitioner training, the second year, my mom was so on fire with saying, let's take these teachings out into the world. Don't just pray with your congregants. These are universal principles. Get them out into the world. And so Annie Rohrbach did. She has taken spiritual principles that we teach and has made a book for everybody. And that is pretty amazing. So I would just like to welcome Annie Rohrbach, honor her. And Take the microphone. She didn't. Am I on? Yes, yeah. I'm on. I'm on. She didn't say that I own not only integrated spiritual universal principles, ancient wisdom, but I've also had 25 years experience as a professional organizer, primarily in people's homes and home offices. And many of you may have taken some of the classes that Susie Poinsett and I developed called Letting Go and Lightening Up in Your Mind, Your Home, Your Office, and Your Life. <sighs> Clarity. It's one of my favorite God qualities. And one of my favorite definitions of clarity is the state of or quality of being clear. Some of us may be pretty clear about the foods we like, the books we like to read, the movies we like to watch, the people we like to be with. That's often quite clear. But there may be some parts of our lives where things aren't quite so clear. Our thoughts, our feelings, the challenges that we may face, 
they can muddy our thinking and cause, as Carol pointed out, confusion, chaos, overwhelm, sometimes paralysis, sometimes depression, and sometimes a true feeling of hopelessness. And the more we think about and focus on our muddied thinking, have you noticed that more muddied thinking occurs? Right? And when our thinking is unclear and and chaotic, it's often reflected in our surroundings with more clutter, more piles of stuff, less order. Anyone relate to this? You know, I, just as an aside, I love in terms of muddy thinking, was just, which was a word that just came up last night. If you'll notice on the altar, I, oh, maybe it's, maybe it's a magnolia, but I thought it was a lotus blossom. And I love the symbol of the lotus because it... it, it Here's a lotus. Oh, good. Oh, good. There are, oh, good. There are lotus. Anyway, the lotus comes out of the mud. It gets, it gets its fertilizer. It gets its stuff. It gets what makes it grow from the mud. So when we have this muddied thinking, it gives us an opportunity to come out of that mud into clarity, into clear water. This is one of the reasons I love the teachings and philosophy of Ernest Holmes, religious science, science of mind, because we're taught, we learn, we discover how powerful our minds are, how powerful our thoughts are, how powerful our words are. And what what we know and what we learn, as has been mentioned several times already, when we change our thinking, when we change our thoughts, when we change the words that we're saying to ourselves and to others, it changes our experience. When our minds are full of mental clutter, all that yippy yappy monkey mind, those self defeating thoughts, feelings, all those bajillion things on our mental to-do list, which hopefully you're beginning to get out of your mind by putting on a written to-do list, plus all the information that we are bombarded with uh, through the media, through radio, through television, through books that we read, magazines that we read, through the internet, through our smartphones. (sighs) It's just thinking about that sometimes creates even more clutter. In fact... No wonder our minds are cluttered. We are bombarded, we are subjected, and then we whirl it around and toss it around and try and find chaos, try and find clarity out of the chaos. You know, have any of you experienced right now sort of a, a, uh, like a clutter in your mind from all of this? Fortunately, we are gifted with something that we always have with us that can help us in any given moment clear the clutter in our mind, whatever that is. Everybody take a deep breath. (sighs) Take another one. (sighs) Better? In any moment, you have something with you that can get you into present moment. And isn't it easier to focus and get things done when we're in present moment? when we're in the right frame of mind, it's when we can use what Ernest Holmes would call our right thinking. When it comes to the chaos, confusion, and the clutter so many of us may be experiencing at even higher levels than ever, I am convinced that if we take the time to identify and clear all that clutter in our mind, and replace those old thoughts with new thoughts that lift us up, we will attain clarity. It was several years in this community before I became aware of why we are called a new thought movement. Take the old, pl- old thought, replace it with a new thought to have a new experience. Yes, I was a little clueless, but I'm getting better. <laughs> in my workshop this afternoon, there are, uh, it's from one to four, and if you haven't signed up, you still may. I brought plenty of handouts. Um, it's, it's at the Learning Center. Uh, you will learn a lot of 
ways to identify and clear out your mental clutter. And there's even more ways in my book, um, which I'll be signing afterwards, and I appreciate all of you who have been buying it, and I love to sign it. Um, But here's something else to think about. When we have a clear mind, there is lots more space in there for us to get in touch with the God within us. When we quiet the clutter in our mind, we connect more fully and deeply with that one mind, that divine mind, that allows us, that, that guides us, that shows us the way. Some of us call it intuition. Some of us call it guidance. But it's a way that we can allow ourselves to express and experience at a greater level all those incredible God qualities which are the themes all through the year. Peace, love, joy, order, balance, harmony, vitality, beauty, clarity, freedom. They are all available to us. And when we have that space in our mind, having cleared out the clutter, there's more room for divine inspiration and creativity, which makes it easier for us to clear out the spaces around us that will nurture us and keep us in present moments and keep us at peace. So I came up with the subtitle of my book. It's called Conscious Order, Clear Your Mind, Leave Clutter Behind. But as this came up, I thought, here's a new one. Clear your mind and more of the divine you'll find. (laughs) It's all available. With a clear mind, we can feel better about ourselves and our surroundings. We can experience greater well-being and allow our highest good to unfold. So I just right now would... Just one second. (laughs) About 35 years ago, I was a homemaker and a mother, and I found something that I didn't really understand it, but I put it on my bulletin board in the kitchen. And this is what it reads. You have powers you never dreamed of. You can do things you never thought you could do. There are no limitations in what you can do except the limitations in your own mind as to what you cannot do. Don't think you cannot. Think you can. So now I know if I let go of my limitations, if you let go of your limitations, clarity and order is mine. Clarity and order is yours. Claim it, give thanks for it, and allow it to flow through you in every moment. Allow it to provide you with comfort and joy, greater peace of mind and well-being. And so it is. Thank you. Well, I'm going to be at the workshop. So um, the aspect of clarity that I want to talk about, Annie just talked about comfort and well-being. I want to talk about clarity in relation to interpersonal clarity because this is interpersonal month. This is month of love, one unto another. So uh, if we are clear with one another, First, we have to be clear with ourselves. And then if we can be clear with one another, we become very, very safe because everyone knows that what we say is so. The opposite to that, which I had a very easy time in coming up with examples from my own life, is confusion. So let me go through some of these, and maybe, just maybe, I'm not the only one. Confusion happens in relationships when... Our head and our heart express different things, okay? For example, I say I support you, 
But in reality, my heart is not involved with you in any way at all. Can you imagine that would lead to confusion? I'm saying to you, oh yeah, I support you, but what I do doesn't reflect that. Another example is when our words and our thoughts are different. I say I agree with your ideas, but in reality, I wholeheartedly disagree with you. That can cause confusion. Have you ever had that with someone? You're hearing the words they're saying, but it's confusing because every aspect, every other aspect of them says the opposite. That leads to confusion. Um, when we try to believe something that is not supported by spiritual truth, that leads to confusion. These are, I, I'm going to put these in the letter that I send out. You know, if you're not on my letter, just go to our website, click on subscribe. I do a recap of the talk. I think these are so powerful because we do these sort of automatically because we're in bad habits. Sometimes we want to protect ourselves, and so we uh, say something that we think someone else wants to hear, and it's not really true, and it causes confusion. So this one, when we try to believe something that's not really supported by truth, if I'm trying to believe that the Republicans or the Democrats or the Palestinians or the Israelis or a heavily tattooed person is not as beloved and sacred as I am, that is not supported by spiritual truth. If I'm in heavy judgment about a group or an individual, and the spiritual truth is we are all one and equally as beloved, one unto another, then I have confusion in my own mind. And of course a confused person expresses that into the world. Then the last example I came up with is when we witness something that does not fit our worldview. So once again, someone that I judge to be you know, not having it together whatsoever, comes up with something that is so solid, so wise, so compassionate, so pure, that causes confusion. Now, these are not the only things about trying to know two opposite things. When we try to know two opposite things, we cause confusion in ourselves and in those that we have relationships with. So, a confusion is when our insides are not in accord. We don't agree with everything that's coming forth from us. And we don't agree with spiritual truth. So then clarity must be the opposite. Clarity must be that my insides are in complete agreement. And that knowingness that I have that is reflected in my thoughts, in my speech, and in my action is also congruent with spiritual principle. Okay? Does that make sense? I'm, this is so important in personal relationships. It is, it is important in world peace. Every, from two people getting together to two countries getting together, this is absolutely a, an essential thing to know that when we're out of alignment, we're dangerous because we hurt ourselves and others. Because someone may base their life choices on what we said, which isn't entirely true. Or we make a life decision based on a belief that is not in the highest truth, but based on our fear, or based on our doubt, or based on what we hope but don't really believe in. If there is a misunderstanding, confusion reigns instead of clarity. And confusion can be caused by intentional lies because we're scared or because we're manipulative or because we want to win. Confusion can, can be caused by laziness because it's just easier to say what we think somebody wants to hear instead of really form our, our words carefully. And it also can be caused just by lack of experience. And, and models of people that were also not very clear. So the causes of confusion create ineffective interaction all the way to international conflict. Isn't it wonderful there's a remedy? And, you know, I just want to draw your attention to this altar once again. This is Suzanne Mabardi's uh, Clarity Altar with compassion and that wonderful analogy of uh, the uh, lotus flower coming up out of the mud. Um, 
So, the remedy to confusion is to seek clarity and then to express it. This is what Angelus Arian says in this chapter. Perhaps our greatest practice is to choose to experience this universal spiritual truth in our own lives, which she'll get to, to make a conscious decision to immerse ourselves in the light and warmth of the heart. We can choose and choose again as the need arises to redirect our attention away from worries and resentments, doubt, false beliefs, shake ourselves loose from apathy and indifference, and focus our awareness from moment to moment, hour by hour, on tenderness and affection. So, clarity comes when we know what the universal truth is that we're working with. And we also know our individual truth with a small t, which happens to be our desires, our opinions, our our preferences. And this is um, challenging enough that, as she says, hour by hour, day by day, moment by moment, we have these choices to make, sometimes hundreds of times a day, that we can express more wisdom, more experience, more wise introspection. So if, if you're unclear about what universal truth is, I encourage you to take any class and um, I encourage you to see a practitioner and give them a, an issue that you're working on and ask them, what is the universal principle that is operating here? But some of the universal principles that we work with all the time are, I am one with God and one with everyone else. Another universal principle is, life is supportive of you. Life is not against you. Life is always supportive of you. And as Annie said about a clear mind, wisdom and guidance are always available. So we have these central truths. I am one with everyone. The universe supports me. Wisdom is available. And then in my life, I have preferences. I have a choice about what movie I want to see. I don't have to say, oh, whatever you want. So we balance universal truth and personal preference. Okay? Balance universal truth and personal preference in love relationships, in parenting, in business, in friendships, in collegial relationships, in volunteer service, in committee work. So we are clear on the universal principle and honest with our preferences. So for an example, I went through two painful divorces. If I had said this, that I, that I thought about really carefully today, in the wisdom of today, without someone that I'm having an enormous conflict with, if I was able to say this, Imagine how those divorces probably would have still happened, but how they would have been if I had said this. I intuitively know how to be an unconditionally loving parent, but I do not know how to be an unconditionally loving partner. I am unhappy in this marriage, and it has nothing to do with your perfection. I wish, I wish I had said that. Because that doesn't mean that because you're one with everyone and love is universal, that you have to stay someplace that is killing you. But you can center it in universal truth and then your desires. You can do this. If you need help, I'm here to help you. And so is every practitioner. It's possible. We're having a service fair today. And the service fair is because we encourage people to say this. 
I support the work of my spiritual center completely. And in order to do that wholeheartedly, I'm taking a break from service. We encourage you to do that because we know that burnout happens. And so there are some leaders that really want to step down now, and I want to make that available to them so that they can wholeheartedly keep supporting this community. So here is the formula. Center in spiritual principle. Own your feelings. Become in alignment with rigorous honesty. And share. I'll put this in the letter. <laughs> but just, for, just to, to try this out. Feel into something that you are really clear about. And, you, and it, it should come to you right away. You're very, very clear about something. And it has to do with, with a feeling and a thought. You're very, very clear about something and feel how that feels. It sits in you comfortably. You could speak a truth about that right now. Feel, feel that? Now, shift into something that holds a little bit of confusion for you. You're not sure about what to do. You have conflicting feelings. And do you feel that difference inside? That's very instructive for you. You know you can live your whole life from the place of that clear feeling. You can live your whole life based in spiritual principle and honesty with others. Now, there, that could cause some hurt, but it doesn't cause suffering. You know, people can take the truth. And that feeling that you had when there was a little confusion, that's what you don't want. And so, because the wisdom of God is everywhere, all you have to do in this moment is say, I'm open to the clarity. I'm open to the clarity. And then when it pops in, share it. <sighs> okay, this is a big this is a big one. And this is a this is an in this is what an in process lesson feels like. Sometimes we have totally feel-good Sundays. This is an in-process lesson. But because you know what that feeling of clarity feels like, I'm telling you, that's the way we're meant to live every breathing moment. So to conclude today, instead of that, that was our little inner work there. I have a little ritual that we're going to do with Annie. So I'd like to, Annie to come up, if you would. And this is my book on the altar. I want you to hold my book that you signed for me. And just hold it like this. So now, what I want us to do is to get really clear on something that we wish Annie. We wish this for her work. We wish this for her book. We wish this for her work in the world. We with, wish this for her divine expression and, and figure out what that is. Let it come to you. Be congruent, completely clear on what we wish Annie. It, it should be a word because you're going to say it. Now, make your hands into a tray and put what you're offering Annie on the tray and then we're going to say all together, I offer you, and then offer it with your word. Okay? I offer you joy. <laughs> and, <yeah! laughs> then, um, then change your hands to your blessing hands and say... I support your work. I support your work. 
I support your book. I support your book. I support you, Annie. I support you, Annie. Thank you for bringing order and clarity. Into our world. Into our world. Mudra of prayer, blessed be. Thank you. Darkness comes over you And the struggle has blocked your view And all your people are far away And your life feels like a masquerade You got to follow Follow the call You've got to follow Forbidden Seek direction From the wind Trust your nature And look within You've got to follow
When darkness comes over you And the struggle has blocked your view Seek direction from the wind Trust your nature and look within You got to find Follow the call You got to follow Follow the call Just like Annie did. I love God the Savior because voting like it is a photograph. The music is reached out of the way and it's perfect. Perfect. Now is the time for our tithes and offerings, so if you will prepare yours, if you are not able to give online, you can do that on our website. If you are not on our automatic giving program, that makes it very easy, you know. You just call the office and give us um, a number, you know, a bank number of any kind, and, uh, and then say whatever amount on a regular basis. It's completely confidential and easy. And that's what the people who put those little cards in that say, I've already pledged, that's what that's about. So anyway, get your little card out, get your little check out, get your little pocketbook out. Fill your whole being with love and know that that love flows in and through and around you. Love is being poured into you from the infinite presence all the time. If love flows through you all the time, then there is this big old river of love that just keeps pouring. And part of that is money. And the more you give, the more you receive. It's a uh, principle. So if, are the ushers ready? Are the ushers? I see one usher. <laughs> They're in the dream. Yeah. Okay. Please receive the gifts. I can see clearly now the rain.
bless this offering and all of the good that comes with it. All of the blessings that pour into this community and support it in every way. Support its people, its classes, its programs, the buildings, the music, and mostly, this gift supports the transformation of lives into more joy, more happiness, more peace. Ah, blessed be. Yay! Okay, so remember this is Service Sunday, and uh, we're going to do this another Sunday as well. So uh, because I was gone this week, um, well, whatever. There's going to be more things to sign up for next week because I don't see... Sunday teams. I don't see Sunday teams out there. And we have plenty of slots on Sunday teams. Now I want to remind you that if you sign up for volunteering, it only means like one Sunday a month. And then you have your your wonderful team to work with and, and um, but there's lots and lots of things to sign up for and they're kind of, you kind of have to look around on all of these tables, go shopping for what might uh, be fun for you. And um, the the food is on the tables, so it, that, and that's our little encouragement for you to go and see that. And then Annie is going to be signing her book right back here at the table. You can buy it at the bookstore, and Annie will sign it, and we'll see you at the workshop. And so i call the practitioners forward. These are the wonderful beings that will help you come to clarity, and Posey will pray us out today. The rest of the practitioners. Please surround the room. So if you have anything heavy on your heart or any gratitude, all of these beings are available to know the truth with you right after service. So I invite you back into the stillness of your own heart and to feel back into that place of clarity Remembering with me that there is truly only one life. It is that life of God that I call God that lives and moves and has our be its being in each one of us. It is that which breathes us, that which we are breathing. And as Annie reminded us, that all we need do is to take a nice deep breath. Let's do that now. Breathing in and breathing out with that intention of returning to the present moment, to remembering that we are surrounded by that one life, that I am that which God is, that all that God is, all of its clarity, all of its wisdom, all of its peace, all of its love resides in me as I become aware of it. And that is true for everyone in this room and beyond. Each one of us is made in God's image and likeness and all of God is available to us as we let it in. So I claim for each one that opening in consciousness to allow each of us to align with, to feel, to sense, to embody, to embrace that clarity that bright, sunshiny day that is within each of us to allow it to bubble up and express through an open, safe heart as each one of us. How sweet it is to open, to allow, to let go. Oh my goodness, let go. And let that indwelling divinity within us have its way as us. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful as I release this word to the activity of the law, knowing the law must return this word, pressed down, overflowing. It is done simply because I say it is so. I let it be. And so it is. Blessed be.
invite you now, all of you, to stand for our affirmation and closing song and come back next week. Okay, right up there. Crystal clarity lives and moves in my heart and mind and my environment. Doubt, confusion, and uncertainty vanish into nothingness, leaving the mind of God free access to move through me for good.